Welcome back boys, my name is Rob, this is Sarah, and in this episode we're going to be talking about our off-grid security system. Recently we purchased some land out west, so a few thousand miles away. It's awesome, but when we were in the process of buying the land, the previous owner had like a an RV on it, and in the middle of the night, it walked off. No more RV. <laughs> So uh, the community was kind of shocked that something like this happened. And with us being so far away, we wanted a, a solution to keep an eye on our property and make sure none of our stuff grows legs and walks away. And take a little of the pressure off of our neighbors who have been really, really great and keeping an eye out for us. But like, we should be part of this too. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. The, the first rule is make friends with your neighbors. Okay. Luck Just... out and have great neighbors. That's another rule <laughs> yeah we looked at a bunch of different ways of doing this and there's a lot of different security systems out there a lot of them are going to have monthly subscription rates so if you don't have any solar system or power or anything at your place yet the easiest thing to do is to use a standalone like trail cam that's solar powered with cell signal we got one a while ago i think it's called spy point uh yeah it's really great i i stumbled across it it uses lte cell service from any provider and it will send you <laughs> Vanna, it will send you uh, your photos and you don't have to have a monthly subscription unless you want uh, a larger amount of photos per month if you're going to have a lot of traffic. So that was our first really great solution and has been our backup. Yeah, what's nice is it pings your phone too whenever there's movement. So we'll get a picture of our neighbor's dog running around or whatever. Or a deer. There's been some cool wildlife yeah. photos too in but there. So. We wanted uh, a more robust system with multiple cameras and um, more of a deterrent because a trail cam hidden in a tree is not really going to deter anyone from messing with your stuff. In the last video, we showed you guys how to install an off-grid power system using solar panels and batteries and all that. This system is building on that and it's basically a home security system. Um, I purchased mine from Amazon. I'm going to put a link down there, but it's really awesome. We have tons of cameras. We have floodlights, we have flashing red and blue lights, we have sirens. Um, we you can, can You can yell at people, you can talk through it. Yeah, yeah, so we'll show you what we did. Uh, we are not sponsored, so I'm not trying to like push these. This is just uh, what I thought was the best solution. All right, let's do it. All right, one other thing. I wanna talk about power real quick. This whole series has been sponsored by Ampere Time Batteries. I mean, they just gave me a deal on some batteries. I don't mean they're paying me to do this, that would be sweet. But uh, they are self-heating batteries, which are important for high altitude builds that aren't climate controlled. And we were having some issues for the first few months we put the power system together, but it was not the batteries. It was definitely the Renogy products. Avoid Renogy by any other brand. Personally, I went with Victron, but now that that power system is working awesome, this whole off-grid security system has been rock solid. But yeah, if you're looking for lithium batteries, definitely check out Ampere Time. They're way more affordable than Battleborn or Dakota or any of those other brands. I mean, the, the, the technology is the same, price is cheaper, and the customer service has been awesome. All right, let's keep going. All right, so now that we have power, what we need now is the security system. What we're gonna be using is a Zosi system. This is uh, available on Amazon, I'll put a link below. Now, I have the same system at my house. What I like about it is that the cameras are wireless, so you can just mount them wherever and just give them power and you're good. The other thing is about this system specifically, the cameras that come with it are really cool. They have night vision, they've got color, a floodlight, and then they also have a flashing red and blue light. And I really think that the more deterrence and the more obnoxious you can make your place, the, the better you're gonna be. So I pretty much chose this based off the cameras themselves. So here's your little box. It comes with a one terabyte hard drive currently. I've pulled that out and I've put in an SSD. Again, this is a fairly high altitude build that is not climate controlled and we're relying on solar power. So with an SSD, I'm gonna get greater reliability and extreme temperatures and it's gonna reduce the energy consumption of this unit. That, that was pretty easy to do. You just take out these four screws and slide this panel off and it just slides right in there. I did have to buy an adapter to use an SSD, so I'm gonna put that down there too. But now this thing is solid state, should be better for crazy climates and reducing the power consumption. So we're gonna be mounting this in the shed. This is where all your data is going to be stored. You can access it from anywhere with your phone as long as you have a connection. Now let's check out these cameras. So here are these Zosi cameras, really high quality die casting, looks like aluminum construction. Um, again, they have an infrared flood and a white spotlight flood. And then right here, they have flashing red and blue lights, which I think is awesome. 
The other really cool thing right here, this is a microphone and a speaker. So you can choose to yell at people if you want. Um, I'm going to remind them that my neighbors are pretty close by and carry firearms. So that should hopefully scare off anyone who's messing with my stuff. Installation wise, again, it's super simple. You could actually use a cable with these cameras if you wanted to hardwire them to the unit itself. But because they are wireless, all they really need is 12 volt power. This whole shed is a 12 volt system. So we're going to be putting some of the cameras on this shed. And then the bus over there also has a solar system with 12 volts. Probably gonna be putting a couple, couple cameras over there as well. That should give us a pretty good view of everything happening here. All right, so for communications here, we are lucky enough to have a good cell signal. So we are just going to be using a 4G router. This is one I got off Amazon for like 70 bucks. It's a Kufi, Kum, Kum, Kufi. I, I don't know how to say this, but um, basically it has uh, some RJ45s on the bottom, a little slot for your SIM card and a DC uh, barrel plug. I do want to note that although they advertise this as coming with a 12 volt DC barrel you know power adapter there it does not come with one it actually only comes with an a wall wart that uses power over ethernet and that's really annoying because this whole shed is a 12 volt system so found a spare wall wart we're just going to cut this up and wire it directly into the system and that should allow this to work so time lapse All right, so for powering these cameras, they are 12 volt power supplies that come with them, like wall warts. But what, since this is a 12 volt shed, we really don't need this part. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and clip this off. Don't need that. I'm just gonna strip these wires. Now, one thing you wanna do is you wanna know which wire is positive and which wire is negative. And there's a really easy way to tell with a meter, just put it on the setting that makes the beep when you put the, the things together like that. And the ground or the negative is always the outside of the barrel plug. The inside is always the positive. So there's positive, this one's negative. So I'm gonna put my red wire on this one and my black wire on the other one. So to connect these wires together, I've been using these solder seal wire connectors that I got off Amazon, I'll put a link down below, but these things are awesome, um, especially when you're off grid. You slip on your, your heat shrink first, and a little bit further away, and then you take your wire, and you just jam it in until both wires are behind this little solder ring. I don't know if you can see that, but they're both in this little ring of solder. And then this is one of the coolest toys I've gotten in a while, but it's a uh, cordless butane powered heat shrinker thing. So you just use this and it'll shrink that connection on there for you and melt the solder. You can do it with a lighter too. It's just more annoying and you go through lighters pretty quick. There we go. I have a camera right here with a warning light, so it's always gonna flash red and blue. And then when you get near it, that spotlight's gonna come on. It does have human versus animal detection, so I can set it up to send me notifications. Inside the shed here, this one's kind of fun because it isn't just a light. So that one is really loud. Then we have one over here facing the bus and when it detects me, it's gonna beep and flash lights to let you know that your picture is being taken. And then because these are wireless, I have another one right here on the bus. So it's gonna be uh, recording anyone that gets near the bus as well. Inside the bus, I do have some booby traps that I'm not gonna put on camera. And then this is what the Zosi system looks like on TV. I'm gonna go to main menu. Set up alarm and let's go to motion detection for camera four and we're going to go to area. So 
So it's gonna bring this up. And right now my van is in the way, but occasionally cars drive past here. So you can see that the movement of the leaves is setting this camera off like crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear and I'm only gonna have motion detection right here. So it's kind of cool. So now if I hit save, the trees should not be setting this off. So these can move and do all sorts of the other moving and the lights aren't coming on. That's really handy because then you, you kind of eliminate a lot of your false alarms. Let's go there. pretty good. I don't want to get that branch right there. All right, so there we go. I think my alarm system is all set up and ready to go. All right, we are now back in Wisconsin. It's been months later <laughs> and we're going to show you how the security system works. Sarah's going to show you how the security system looks on your phone. All right, so first this is the Spy Point app. This is the trail cam that uses cell service to send you photos. So I've got that in there and we'll click photos. And you can see, for example, a little photo that was taken when, I don't know, a leaf flew by or something, but gives you a nice view. We've got a couple of those around the property as sort of a backup system, which is pretty great. That also has a night vision mode, so if something flags it overnight, it'll send. That's not a great photo, but you get the idea. And this is the Zosi system. As you can see, you can have eight cameras on one thing. We only have four channels right now, but we might be getting more. Um, and you can click on any of the channels and it will show you not only the live footage, but playback of the last, but whatever day, there's a you know, calendar, it stores it in the system. So you can start overnight with um, night vision and scroll all the way up. The little dashes in there are when there was movement and you have, I have it set to alert me with different types of movement, specifically human. Um, but you can make it, oops, there you go. You can make, make it bigger too if you wanna see what's going on. Very cool. Yeah, it's been working pretty well. We, we I haven't gotten too many false alerts either the way Rob set the system up and definitely um, no when one of our neighbors stopped by to check on things, got to, you know, wave to my phone. <laughs> All right, dudes, thanks for watching. This is what we did for our off-grid security system. Maybe there's a better way, but this is what we did and it's working pretty good so far. If you learn anything, please leave a comment. If you got a better idea, definitely leave a comment. <laughs> All right, cheers, till next time.